Hi, Sarah Destiny. Thank you so much for joining us in Premier Gospel today. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So, obviously you're best known for your YouTube channel and you make videos about faith, beauty and lifestyle and you have over 19,000 subscribers now. Um, why did you start your channel and what does it mean to you? So I started my channel originally because I have kind of a very unhealthy obsession with YouTube. <laughs> and the problem is this obsession didn't just start, you know, like a lot of people have really started watching YouTube of recent. I think I've had this obsession probably since I was like maybe 14, 15. And my favourite YouTuber of all time, if you were to ask me, is Patricia Bright. I absolutely love her so, 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 so much. So, um... I always used to watch her videos and for some reason I just always used to tell myself that you know one day I think I really want to like start making videos like it just looks really cool it's almost like an online community um but I just completely like pushed it off um when I was in my first job at university um when I first studied law I didn't graduate from law but that's another story for another day um there was quite a lot going on with me I went through like my first ever breakup with my first ever boyfriend um depression, struggles with university so much and around that time I just felt God telling me that you know this is the time I'm gonna allow you to start your channel and when I heard like the Holy Spirit told me that I kind of pushed it aside but I was scared I was like oh yeah sure sure I'm gonna start a channel um and instantly I heard the voice again I just said you know what went straight to Curry's got myself a camera literally the following week I posted my first video which is so embarrassing I hate that video so much but it's like what was your first video like, confidence and loving yourself oh that's such yeah, a nice topic though it was a really nice topic but obviously my editing at the time was terrible oh, I just had different transitions <laughs> left right and center <laughs> um so it's nice to be able to see the growth um and literally so many people talk so well to it my friends continue to encourage me um and since then i've just stuck to it and i just love youtube so much it's just given me a platform to not only be myself but also impact people around the world like i would have never thought that people would know me for being sarah destiny because at the time it was just let me just make videos for fun but knowing that i'm able to influence thousands of people around the world with just like a six minute video seven minute video it literally is just so amazing and I'm just so thankful for the opportunity. That's amazing. Um, so obviously a lot of your content is centred around your experience at university and also life post-grad. Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give to Christian students who are about to graduate? Oh, if you're about to graduate, okay. Um, for me personally, I understand that everybody's story is different. There are some people who get a grad job one minute after university. There's some people who it takes one year. And just understanding that your journey is what you make of it. Um, also holding on to faith. I didn't get my first full graduate job until a year post uni. But even during that one year, I didn't lose any faith whatsoever. Just continuously reminding myself that if God can allow me to finish university, then surely he's going to do the rest and he's going to bring me to the right people. He's going to allow favour to speak for me. And most importantly, I'm going to get the right job needed at the right time. And um, what has life post like university been like for you, being in the real world? Hmm, life post you. to be honest, I kind of feel like I struggled a bit at first because it's like from when I was in nursery to primary school, secondary college, university, it's kind of like my life has already been planned out for me and I knew you know the next stage was this the next stage was this and after university you don't really know what the next stage is it's like, you're just you're literally just thrown yeah. into the ocean like you're an adult now handle life <laughs> you know so um for me at first I did struggle quite a bit just in terms of adjusting to adulthood um but I think the quicker I was able to understand that you know this is life now I'm an adult I'm growing older that was when I was able to kind of take hold of my life, take hold of smart decisions, especially my finances, because student finance was not coming in anymore. <laughs> you know, so little things like that. But most importantly, just staying active and staying busy. Like YouTube allows me to stay busy, um, but also allowing yourself to be open and free. Like if you're not feeling okay, speak to someone about it. I'm very lucky to have friends who are also in the same boat as me and also a very supportive family. But let people know like how you're feeling if you feel like you're struggling or battling with things post uni then it is more than okay to speak about it because i promise you you're not alone 
And being young and Christian in today's society can be somewhat challenging at times. Um, but how can young people find their purpose? Oh, um, that's actually quite interesting you answering that because I, by the way, I'm a lover of quotes. I have like 30,000 pictures on my phone. Oh, and I think you're getting to the quotes later on. Quotes. Don't worry about it. <laughs> But um, there was a quote that I came across literally this morning as well, um, which was along the lines of don't don't try and find your purpose, find God and he will show you your purpose. And I think that kind of just links to young Christians, especially um, many times it's like, OK, what can I do? What's the next big thing? What's going to make me a millionaire? What's going to make me rich? But in actual fact, when you find yourself in that boat, you get distracted very easily. You drift off very easily because you're doing things on your own accord. You're not allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. And I find that every single time that I've literally just left it to God, like I'm not even necessarily thinking about my next steps. I'm literally having more quiet time. I'm reading my Bible more. I'm listening to more worship music. God is literally showing me bit by bit the next stage of my life. And it's like, once you're able to fully give it over to God and actually immerse yourself in him and in his word, I promise you, your purpose, your wisdom, destiny, all of that just comes so naturally. You wouldn't have to force anything because it's actually coming from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, so obviously, aside from YouTube, you run your own business as makeup artist. Um, how do you use makeup as a ministry? Oh, that is a good question, Hannah. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, to be honest, like, so GBS was my first business and I'll have the logo connect as well. Um, and hopefully more to come. So that's <laughs> um, design as well. Plug it. Yeah, graphic design. Plug it. Um, at the logo connect on Instagram. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for me personally, um, luckily I've always been quite a creative person. But I kind of see it as I use my creativity to not only make people feel good about themselves, but also help them to birth visions that God has given them. Mm -hmm. And I'm very um, blessed to be able to use my skills to also make money as well, but also just impact people. Like obviously people use makeup as a means of, you know, trying to beautify themselves and things like that. But one thing that I really pride myself with when it comes to my makeup artistry is I do not try to change your face. Like, <laughs> I want you to just look like an enhanced, beautiful version of you mm. because you're naturally beautiful. And um, I think it's very important as well to be able to echo that in all of my work. And just likewise with the logo Connect 2, I'm able to thankfully see a brief and make it a reality for someone. And as a result, they now pursue their business and pursue their dreams. So um, I'm very grateful that with my businesses and my ideas, I'm able to merge creativity with my faith and also see that link in helping people birth visions in the process. That's so, so, so good. Um, so do you have any advice for young people who want to start their own business or go freelance? Oh, okay um okay yeah all right so i think the first piece of advice i would give is in terms of freelance is a tricky one you know because it's like you really want to do what you love but many times freelance doesn't actually pay and we also have to be very realistic with things you know so for me personally whenever people want to ask for advice regarding freelance um i always recommend not necessarily going into freelance as the first thing like if you can manage a job and freelance on the side I would 100% recommend that because as you are also earning money, you can also build your portfolio by freelancing instead of just going straight into freelancing. I think you're just like, I don't know, I'm going to pay for my phone bill uh, or things like can, that. You can kind of like use your finance to invest in your business in return. Exactly, exactly. Um, so even like with me, currently right now I am self-employed, of course. But at the time, I did have a job which enabled me to buy these softwares, buy these products and things like that. So I definitely would say that. Um, also as well, it's like, don't allow people to discourage you. I'm very, I love how the world is moving right now. You know, a lot of people are creatives and they're doing this and doing that. And they're able to, you know, beneficially for, for them as well financially, it is very beneficial for them. But at the same time, don't allow people to discourage you. Like if you are an amazing artist and you really love art, then go for it don't let people tell you oh there's not that many artists that there's or artists that really make that much money or they're not really recognized until five years into the industry because there is someone out there who will see your gifts and will pay for your gifts or will want your gifts in their house or just mm -hmm. something to do with you so don't allow people to discourage you and most importantly as well um i will say you can take breaks 
freelancers a lot of the time take breaks with whether that they don't have um what do they call it writer's block creative block things like that like it's okay to take a break it's okay to rebrand it's okay to realign with your vision so if any time you feel like you're really tired during the process it's okay to just take a step back analyze your goals once again and then realign yourself when you feel like the time is right um but freelancing is amazing big up all the freelancers out there <laughs> and um yeah yeah mate it's so nice to be freelance i went freelance so I was freelance for a few years and then I went staff somewhere for six months and then I was like, I need, like, I feel too restricted. I need my freedom. Um, yeah. And I went like, I, I think it was like September last year or whenever and I left the job and then it's just like everything kind of ripples when you take that step of faith as well, I feel like sometimes. Yeah. So it's like taking 100%. calculated risks, you know. Mm. But yeah, it's so rewarding, isn't it? Um, it is. <laughs> so you also have your Instagram account called Notes to Self Daily. Um, mm -hmm. Why did you start that? And um, what has been your favourite quote that you've uploaded? Oh, wow. Okay, so Notes to Self Daily. Um, as a platform, the Instagram platform started last year, October. But um, I actually started Notes to Self. I think you have maybe like tag, right? Yeah, yeah um, Notes to Self Daily um so i keep forgetting to plug myself <laughs> but um <laughs> um it initially started i think if anything ends in 2017 on twitter um and it was just randomly i was just like you know what i'm gonna need some motivation and the timeline at the time wasn't really that you know motivating so i was like i'm just gonna be making just random tweets like you've got this hashtag next yourself or um, brighter days are coming hashtag next yourself and as the time was going on i started getting more tweets i think at that time I made one that got, I think, almost like a hundred thousand retweets, and I was just wow. like, "All right, okay, people actually, people Red need this." Mm -hmm. um, so last year, October, I was speaking to my friend, um, and she was literally just like, "Oh, Sarah, like you don't have a like, direct platform to make yourself that like, you just post it on your Twitter," and I was just like, "Oh yeah, I don't actually." <laughs> so um, I created the Instagram page, and every day since October, um, I posted the next self. Um, and it's been really encouraging to be able to build an online community. Um, what I really like about it as well is you only know I run notes to self if you know me personally. So I want it to let, literally be like completely like anonymous, like mm -hmm. this, this motivator somewhere in the world posting quotes. Um, but yeah, I've received um, messages in my DM from people even stretching to New Zealand wow. that are following this account. So it's amazing. I'm really hoping to build it into a larger community very soon with some you know, planning going on behind the scenes. Um, but it, it's, an ama it's amazing to be able to have a platform that people look forward to seeing your quotes every single day. Um, in terms of my favourite quote, that's a hard one because I think I have like 200 posts on that platform so far. <laughs> so I'm trying to think. Um, Okay, I may not be able to like say it word for word, but mm -hmm. paraphrasing, um, uh, paraphrasing, I'll probably say majority of the quotes that I have linked to faith. All my quotes are centered around faith and confidence and self love and things. But um, probably my favorite scripture, which I posted, which was Jeremiah 29 11. Um, and on top of the quotes as well, I always had like a little summary like underneath as to why I posted it. And I think along the lines when I did post that one, it was just about understanding that God always has good plans for you like even when things seem like they're going a bit left right and center because that happens sometimes God always has plans that are that he, he wants you to succeed in everything that you do like he loves you that much that he's making sure that your path is straight so even when things don't seem to be going well you feel like your life is just in a in a way just turning upside down understand that God's thoughts towards you are still thoughts of good and he wants to give you an expected end to not only bring glory to himself, but also allow people to look at your life and say, wow, look what God has done for her, look what God done for him, so, yeah. I love that. Um, so now I also want to talk to you about your testimony because it's quite a testimony and I know that yeah. it will encourage someone <laughs> somewhere and the grace of God and the anointing on your life is obviously just so, so, so strong. So, um, <laughs> It's just crazy. So you were involved in a serious car accident and then you obviously survived um, and you came out with minimal injuries as well, right? Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
and then um, you made a video about it a couple of months later, was it? Yeah. yeah, two months later. Yeah, and then literally so many people were messaging you and were encouraged by the video. And I saw it and I was just like, oh my gosh, this girl, you can just see the love and the anointing on her life, like from Christ, it's so crazy. And then it was literally three days after posting that video and two days before your birthday, you were involved in another car accident. The devil is such a liar. And you also he came out again a second time. <laughs> unscathed so amen. Yeah. hallelujah amen. um but like how are you doing now and can you tell me more about that yeah so um uh i was involved in um almost okay so it's, it's, uh, it's actually so much when i think about it. i'm just like wow did that actually happen but um yeah i was in, almost involved in a really major car accident on the 29th of february this year um my car brakes literally just stopped working and i had no control of my over my car um, and it's quite interesting because that happened on the 29th of February. Um, but I made a promise to God that I was going to share that video before my birthday. I didn't know when. I didn't know when it was going to happen. I just knew I needed to share it before my birthday. Um, and towards the end of April, hitting almost two months since the accident, I was like, you know what, I'm going to share this video. I think it was exactly a week before my birthday. I think, yeah. Um, so I shared the video and the reception was just amazing like literally just so amazing and especially someone like me as well i really love testimony videos but i didn't expect so many people to really see that video and be moved by the spirit of god um so yeah during this time i'm still applying to comments you know i'm still thanking people for watching um and on the 2nd of may i live in kent i was on a motorway um and as i was driving literally 78 miles per hour my car engine just literally started going to zero and I remember I saw it going down to zero. And as I saw it going down, I was like, is my leg off the accelerator? Like, why is my car getting slower? Like, <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Um, but because in the first accident, my brakes weren't working at all, I was like, you know what? Let me at least bring this car to a stop. I put on my hazard lights. Um, I was probably in the car for maybe around seven, eight minutes. I called my mom, I called my close friend, like, you know, what do I do? And I couldn't get onto the harsh order because my car engine wasn't turning back on. So I was actually bang on in the middle of the motorway, just stuck. Um, yep, a car or well, a van actually literally came plunging right into the back of the car. My car spun from the second lane to the fourth lane. Um, no airbag came up. My nose was bleeding because my wheel completely flew off. I had a huge bump in my head. Luckily, it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really run with my head. Um, taken to hospital. Um, they done all the CT scans and everything. And then I was put on bed rest for a couple of weeks. And I'm still currently doing physio. Um, but it was a, if anything, it, the first from the first experience in that video, as you can see, I'm really emotional. Like I am crying. Like every opportunity that I can get. But with this one, it was really weird. It's not like I was definitely emotional, but at the same time, I kind of felt a bit angry. Because I was just like, wait, does Satan actually want to take my life now? Because I don't understand what you're doing. But what's really interesting is, you know, not only do I thank God for life, but it's kind of made me think why it's so important to stick to the promises that you make to God as well. Because I promised I'll do that before my birthday. But there was literally, uh, I potentially couldn't have even seen that next birthday. So it makes me think if I didn't stick to my promise and post that video, was that video my, like, was that the grace that I needed to save me from the next accident? I, I can't really explain it. It's still a lot of like thoughts going in my mind. Um, but if anything, it's reminded me that I'm still here for a purpose. That's just it. And God really isn't done with me just yet. There's still so much that he wants me to do. And it also lets me know as well that the enemy is real, that like, no one can tell me that, that what happened was normal. There, there's no way you can't try and convince me that what happened is normal. Nah. The enemy is real. Yeah, you can't. You actually can't. Don't lie, girl. So, we know this. It literally <laughs> is. It literally is. And when scripture speaks about um, us not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against like the evils and the rules of the dark world and stuff, it's real. Like the spiritual world is just as real as the physical. And when God has anointed you and He's called you for a purpose, that triggers Satan ultimately it triggers him because not only are you allowing yourself to be used for good god knows you're going to help people in the process and of course satan wants to try and take as many people with him to where he is but that ain't gonna happen so um <laughs> if anything it's just it's just reminded me that not only god is real 
but when God has stamped your life, like he stamped it. And also a reminder that if he can continuously give you chances and second chances and third chance, because this is something that happened to me, but we don't know how many times God has protected us from evil in our daily life just because we don't see it. So it's almost like every single day, live your day with meaning. Make sure that you're impacting people. Make sure you're influencing people. Be proud of the life that you're living, but also be proud of the life that God has given you because there's a reason why you're still alive to this day. And I think since the accident, um, just kind of like healing and the whole process and stuff, I've just really had time to really reflect on what I want Sarah Destin to be known for and my brand overall. And um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a period of, I would say, refreshment. It's been a period of refreshment. Um, I'm so ready to just get back into the single things and just continue to do all that God has called me to do. Oh, that's such a great story and I'm so glad that you're here to tell it um yeah um, I mean I know that your you. videos have definitely blessed me over the years and I know that you're you're definitely called to greatness so yeah it's thank just you so much. You're, you're a living testimony now <laughs> <laughs> um so obviously your content is made to inspire and uplift others um to get to that place that you need to lean into God's strength so um what does your quiet time with god look like is it worship bible study church groups tell me more about that mine is my quiet time with god is is worship like i am so moved by worship music and i'm not just moved by you know a lot of people are moved by worship music because you know the piano and you know the this and the that i'm moved by the words i'm mm -hmm. honestly moved by the words because um when you Everyone needs to be able to find what they can do to get them to a place of stillness. You can't live a life that's this and this and out and out and that and that. And there's nothing that can just bring you to a point of stillness and a point of one with the Holy Spirit. And for me, it's literally worship music. So um, I could be worshipping in the car. I can be worshipping sitting down. Majority of the time, I actually just play worship music and I sit in silence. And I know that's kind of like, for some people, it's kind of like really weird, but I just sit in silence or something. I just have my AirPods in. And I'm literally just, I'm a crier as well, by the way. I cry a lot. Oh, I um, do that all the time. I, am, I go to church with people crier. and I'm like, if you see me cry, don't worry about it. I'm, really, I'm good, okay? I'm good. Literally. <laughs> um, honestly, but I'm, I'm such a crier. And many times um, when I'm really moved, I'm just crying. And I think in a sense, that is my, that's how I'm able to show my worship to God because I'm not just crying because, you know, the keys sound nice or this, that. I'm crying because God is actually just faithful. Like, that's it's, his nature. It's when you feel the presence of God in the yeah. room and you go, oh, we're in an open heaven. Okay. Literally, I, I can be sitting in a room, but I know I'm not alone because the presence of God is with me. And it's just so beautiful to know that we have access to the Father anytime. Do you get what I mean? And when scripture says that, you know, God is a God that doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. It's amazing to know we serve a God that I have access to him 24-7. You have access to him 24-7. Someone in, I don't know, um, Zimbabwe has access to him 24-7. And yet, even in all of those things, he is not 10% here, 50% here. He's 100% where you are when you need him. And um, that's literally my quiet time. I also journal a lot. Um, I'm literally a writer. I have so many journals. It's kind of obsessive. I love it there. Um, and also sometimes as well, I find myself awake between maybe like between 12 and 2 a.m. Um, I really love playing um, worship instrumentals on YouTube and I just have that in the background. Mm -hmm. And usually around that time, I'm either maybe writing poems or I'm writing potential notes to self or I'm just, just speaking, that, having a conversation with God, letting him know how I'm really doing and things like that. And it's just a lovely, it's a lovely friendship. I'll say that. It's literally like a friendship and yeah everything i love that um so <laughs> obviously now moving on to the murder of george floyd in recent months um a global movement for black lives matter began and people have started to learn about the black experience and mm -hmm. they are having more important conversations and becoming aware of microaggressions and indirect racism and about how racism is i think there's this misconception that racism is a u.s issue and that it's only it's only in direct name calling and straight up ignorance, but it can be subtle and it could be systematic. And it's also Definitely. a UK issue. And I think a lot of people don't want to kind of have that discussion or 
and the worst thing that you could do is call people out for it because you if you say oh well you're treating me different because of how I look or because of the color of my skin they'll say oh but I'm not racist or I have a black friend or whatever it is you know all <laughs> that stuff. we're like yeah, okay <laughs> doesn't make a difference to me um cool. but yeah so what does this um, mean to you in terms of just like the whole movement of everything and you know how are you using your platform to kind of educate people or you know just yeah um I find it I find it quite disappointing that we're still having to tackle these things in 2020 and if it doesn't feel like it's real it's like are you really still trying to kill people just because of their skin color and um I've never been a racist I don't see the need to, well, I don't know why because at the end of the day I know there's this quote that people say that oh we all bleed red but it's actually very true and it's almost like how can you I didn't, I didn't choose to be this colour, you didn't choose to be that colour, we just happen to be here and we happen to just be humans, like why can't you just love people for being a human being, why does there have to be a certain level of oh because of my colour here or because of my education here, because racism isn't just in terms of your skin colour, it can also be, you can also be discriminated due to your age, due to your education, your status in society, your upbringing, so I feel like it's Although it's disappointing that we are having these conversations right now, I feel like it is almost in a good way that we are having these conversations as well, because it's like, sooner or later, we have to get past this. This can't continue to happen. Someone shouldn't be a threat just because of their skin color. Someone shouldn't be a threat just because of, it's like, no one actually chooses the skin. Like, we're literally just born and we're just hair. <laughs> but I do feel like these conversations are just so needed. And I think right now, um, people also need to understand that just because we may not necessarily be experiencing racism at such an extent that people can be receiving it um, in America and other parts of the world, like at the end of the day, if one person that is like us is discriminated somewhere in the world, then that's discrimination for everyone. And I think it's lovely that many people now are using their platforms for good. I, was, I wasn't on social media around the time for the blackout, um, I think it was blackout Tuesday. Yeah. I, think so. I think it was a Tuesday yeah back up Tuesday I wasn't on social my little sister was and she was literally scrolling through her Instagram and it was just black and black and black and I also want people to be able to recognize that it doesn't just stop there it doesn't just stop at you posting a black screen and then you're back to life and yeah I'm good and we're not experiencing oppression here and da -da -da -da, whatever it literally is making it a part of your life like constantly constantly having these conversations letting people know that these things are not okay and it's kind of interesting how even here in the UK as well like people are just not we're not playing like people are not playing any games like if I even <laughs> sniff a level of discrimination I'm speaking <laughs> you know so 100%. it's lovely to know that yeah it's lovely to know that people are just they're bold with it right now they're speaking about Black Lives Matter and they're speaking about this movement not just because it's a trend but because it's important and we don't want to continue to have generations down the line still tackling these issues because we weren't able to handle them fully ourselves so um, I'm excited to see the many amazing things that are still going to continue to happen um, when I am back on social media of course I want to highlight not only just Black Lives Matter but also Black businesses as well um, mm. many times not even just many times many people don't really like to support Black businesses as much and I don't really understand why I think sometimes it could be due to a negative connotation attached to Black businesses which I don't know where that came from but I want to just continue to support Black businesses whether I'm going to be collaborating with them more in videos whether that be makeup lifestyle even if people have services just letting people know these are movements and these are businesses and organizations that you can follow and also staying up to date with the news on Black Lives Matter. I know there's so many petitions that people are signing, yeah. um, different organisations, newsletters as well, and just being a part of the process as we continue to make change. It's interesting what you're saying about um, black businesses because I feel like so much of the time, obviously people buy into the mainstream and what's popular. And yeah. I don't think people realise, even if there's a black model on the cover of a magazine or a black model modeling on like wh whatever fashion brand it is I won't name any but um it, the, you're lining the pockets of rich white dudes basically and it's like so you know I think people I think we live in a time where you know there are so many great independent black businesses and especially on places like Instagram it's so easy to just so, so, just so educate easy. yourself so sorry, there, is, there is a fly that is oh, is came it? out of nowhere and is 
<laughs> bothering me. Oh, I really hate this. So <laughs> and I won't go back out. And it's annoying because they come through the window, but then it's like they can't find a window to get back out. I hate that. Or like they just they just kind of sit behind the blinds and they're buzzing. Yeah. And you're like, Why are you doing that? Okay, I'm gonna try and not get distracted. Okay. Sorry, don't mind me. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, yeah, so what was what was I gonna say? Um oh yeah, I was gonna say, how can people um be allies for the black community, in your opinion? Oh, okay. Um do you are you specifically um speaking about maybe like other races or yeah, white people, even even non black people of colour. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, so one example, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name, she's another YouTuber. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to say her name. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, her name is Holly Boone, um, she's a makeup artist on um, YouTube and life and everything like that, beauty. And um, she, I think for maybe a period of two weeks, she dedicated her platform to black influencers who maybe created good content but just didn't have the views. And every single day she posted a video of, like, she, she had no control over her channel for, I think, like, a period of seven or 14 days. And little things like that, like, it's always in the little things. You don't have to think of the next big thing that's going to, you know, connect you to 100,000, you know, people of colour in the UK or around the world. It's just in the little things. It's about recognising different talents, most importantly, recognising different talents. If you have a platform, share those talents as well. Like, it costs nothing for you to retweet. It costs absolutely nothing. It costs nothing for you to share um, someone's artwork or someone's um, business on your social media platforms. But even just in terms of like a working, like the working place and environment, I know during this time a lot of people are speaking about how they don't always feel comfortable opening up in their workplace because they don't want to be deemed as someone who is, you know, a complainer or someone who um, doesn't understand briefs or things like that. Yeah. So if you know that someone in your workplace, almost in a sense, shrinks themselves because they don't want to be seen as you know being a, t- a certain way mm. be their voice like speak for them yeah. speak to them as well you know it's literally just in the little things it's in the conversations it's in the support mm-hmm. um it's in the help it's literally in the help and everyone can be a help to ev- to anyone you don't just have to be someone who isn't a person of color even people of color as well help someone out as well like this isn't a competition we're all just trying to live a very nice and peaceful life and some things just seem to be getting in the way but um, we can help each other in the process and I feel like once people start to understand that it's in the little things that they can help people that's when the big changes can actually like happen and take place definitely because even what you were saying about was it Holly Boone is that what her name is yeah yeah Mm -hmm. Holly Boone when I think in comparison to someone like Molly May now from Love Island literally the time of the protest she posted this video and she goes i know there are more pressing issues in the world right now but i really had to come on here and um justify my whatever because i because people having to go at tommy my boyfriend and it's not on it was all me blah 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 and she made a 30 minute video about her dog that died because she imported it from russia people are dying literally she made a video like that and it was that's just like a good comparison to say like this is maybe what you could learn to do instead of doing something yeah. like that yeah. and thinking about yourself kind of thing because you know and also just being, being like being in tune yeah like just being in tune with things that are going on and a lot of people and it's really weird I know a lot of people don't have to speak about some pressing issues because it may not be their brand but yeah. for once like let go of that there are pressing yeah. issues that are happening in our society today and people are using their lives as a process so for once use your use your platform for good like learn to learn to be in tune with the things that are going on in society that's definitely what I would say exactly and I just I don't see any harm by just you know if you don't have anything constructive to say or you're still learning just don't say anything you know exactly you know there's just there are things going on and like there are so many projects and stuff that I um, saw got put on hold for a few weeks because they didn't want to um dim down the impact that Black Lives Matter was having and it's just Mm that's what people need to do they just need to take the time to educate themselves yeah, remind me did. to um, tell your story when we're off the zoom call that I, it's kind okay. of interested in comparison okay. this. but um yeah the final question that i have for you is um how can we shine the love of christ through the uncertain times that we're living in oh okay um number one through prayer like i don't think people really understand the importance of prayer and how much prayer really helps 
um, especially in our Quran church as well, we have prayers like literally every day. Um, number one, through prayer. I'd also say, um, number two, a helping hand to other people, like even just in terms of reaching out to a close friend that maybe you noticed um, used to post every two weeks and now you haven't seen them post in like four months or something like that, um, reaching out to them and letting them know like, are you okay? I one thing that I usually do as well is I randomly like message my friends like oh do you have anything you want me to pray for you like regarding just anything and sometimes I may not speak to them in a couple of weeks but they'll literally be like Sarah thank you so much this is literally what's troubling me can you help me pray about it um on top of that literally like we live in a digital age social media right now is where everything is happening use your platform for good like you can go on even go on the bible app you can go on the bible app they actually create images of scriptures for you you don't have to even do it yourself you can go on the bible app and scriptures that inspire you at the time you can turn that into an image export into your phone post that on your socials post that um on your instagram on your twitter anywhere um and i would also say as well just being a light like you can with social media it's so easy for you to get involved in the wrong conversation especially on twitter it's so easy to get twitter's so problematic nowadays so problematic did you delete like, your Twitter account by the way <laughs> pardon did you delete your Twitter account by the way oh now deactivated yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to look for you earlier and I was like she's not on here <laughs> yeah, I'm not on Twitter at the moment I'm hoping to be back very soon um because Twitter is like like I said you can like toxic, you can get involved in a long conversation mm-hmm. it is quite toxic like you can go from seeing great things great things great things and all of a sudden this twitter beef and retweets here and now indirects all over the, like you know but being a light like literally being different if you see your timeline is full of so much like i promise you you're not the only person who probably has those tweets on your timeline as well Do, post a positive tweet post a scripture post an encouraging words like the beautiful yeah. thing about social media is yeah the beautiful thing about social media is your post can be viewed by people from around the world people that you may not even see on a regular basis or have personal contact with but you posted something encouraging and as a result someone in a whole different country has been blessed or someone even within your community has been blessed as well so it's just about being a light and choosing to be different don't allow yourself to get involved in meaningless conversations that aren't yielding or profiting to anything when you can be a light and actually spark a change just by a click of a tweet or a post of a picture or even just posting a scripture here and there so yeah cool thank you so much for joining me um, is there anything that you want to tell people like upcoming projects any black businesses that you want to plug anything um where can people okay. find you on social oh lovely um upcoming projects you know i'll keep that a secret for now i'm just kidding <laughs> um i'm oh God, working on <laughs> Um, I am working on a major project that will be, um, I'll probably start posting about it maybe towards the end of the year, around October. Um, it's probably going to be one of my biggest projects to date, so I'm really excited about that. Um, you can follow me on socials to stay tuned for when it drops. Um, on YouTube, I'm Sarah Destiny. On Instagram, I'm Sarah Destiny X. On Twitter, I was Sarah Destiny X, but I'll be back soon, so hopefully <laughs> I'll be reactivated by the time this is out. Um, um and black businesses oh my gosh i have so many amazing friends who are doing so many amazing things i'm gonna say i'm gonna say who i can remember right now if i didn't say it guys you know i still love you i'm just being put <laughs> on the spot um i first plug myself the logo connect for all i goes um i want to plug the camp agency i also want to plug um orally for her interiors I want to plug, I want to plug, I want to plug Aura's Homes for amazing candles, um, Brass Color Bash for amazing drinks, um, The Beat Spot for amazing lashes, which yeah, I'm just thinking of all my friends and their businesses. Um, okay, that's all I can think of right now. Yeah, that's all <laughs> I can think of right now. And what's your um, makeup page? My makeup page is GBS Artistry on Instagram. And um, yeah, and I think maybe one thing that I just want to say right now is even during these times, because I know a lot of people are going through quite a lot, especially emotionally, and they're not able to always mentor out. It's okay to feel what you're feeling. I think many times, um, especially during a pandemic, I remember when it first started, people were like, oh, if you're not doing anything in this pandemic, then you're a failure, or you didn't mm-hmm. use this time on, stuff like that. And it's like, 
oh can't we go in for a global pandemic like this is a lot to take on emotionally like exactly. you need to let me breathe <laughs> you need to let me relax like, people are losing um, jobs and stuff like yeah like people are losing jobs and you're out here telling someone that if you're not doing anything good with your life it'll fail that's too much mm. to be hearing way too much so just a your emotions are valid. I think that's what I really want to say. It's okay to feel what you feel, but understand that hard times don't last. Tough times don't last as well. Um, always seek to improve yourself, whether it's by reading a book, whether it's by pushing yourself to do a new job application. Always seek to improve yourself. And most importantly, always allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. Like mm-hmm. You can feel alone, but the Holy Spirit lives in you 24-7. So if you're feeling like you need to recharge, you need to do this, get to your place of stillness whether it's worship whether it's prayer with whether it is praise just get yourself to that place where you're able to just be one with the holy spirit and i'm sure he will direct you and lead you and guide you with insight to your next path and the next stage that you're going on in life so um yeah and then i just thought of one more question um yeah what <laughs> um gospel songs would you encourage people to listen to currently wow as many as you like <laughs> That's a tough one. Okay. Um, oh, I've got so many. Um, all right. Kurt Franklin, Love Theory. Mm-hmm. Fred Hammond, They That Wait. Um, Marvin Sapp, Never Would Have Made It. Um, 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 CSO, Hallelujah. Um, God Can Music, Handy. Um, Kurt Franklin again, Brighter Day. I love Kurt Franklin a lot, by the way. Um, Kurt Franklin, Franklin. Brighter Day. <laughs> Who doesn't love Kurt Franklin, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but to be honest, right now, my go to song is Spin a Fred Hammond, They That Wait. Um, just reminding people that when you wait on the Lord, He renews your strength. Like you fly on the eagle's wings, you've got a glow from the inside out. Um, and just yeah just waiting on God like you don't have to feel like things need to be done on your own accord because when you wait on God he literally sorts the things out so um, off the top of my head I'll probably plug for his gospel gospel song yeah okay great thank you so much for your time um, yeah I wish you all the best and um, thank you I will make sure there are links to everything um, where people can find you in the bio lovely thank you so much Anna. bye bye